Welcome into the Sporty Nerds Universe. I am your host, Jeff Wolf, alongside Adam Dell. Delio, how you doing this week, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? You know, I'm doing okay. I was feeling a little under the weather yesterday. Everyone at my work was, well, not everyone, but like two-thirds were, were, were out. One of the guys was even out for a whole week. Did, uh, did you get the Rona? Got, got the flu. No, none of them had the Rona. Everyone tested. No one had the Rona. Uh, they had uh, Fluenza. Oh. Um, and so their whole and he has he has his wife and two two uh, young kids and they all were out of it so uh, we were all worried and another one went to Tampa for uh, New Year's came back and that he brought back the flu as well or maybe mm. he got the flu from the other guy who knows so uh, work was was hectic this last week uh, uh, at Buck City Breaks but uh, it was uh, we got through it we got through it but there's a lot of companies dealing with that now with with the yeah. flu and. Corona, and apparently there's a Florona now, where the flu and COVID mash up. And oh, there's, they have they had sex. Yeah, they had sex. So we have the That's Florona. Nice. And this morning, <laughs> I even saw that the Delta and Omicron variant have combined to create Delta Cron. Oh, I, I know yeah, we're I, like ma- that. I know we're making light of this, but these names are yeah. becoming interesting. Like what? When? Like in a few months, we'll have the Super Omega Ultra Omega Cron. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> it's, it's kind of like a like a Marvel. Uh, Marvel baddie. Kind of, yeah. Like, we just keep getting these new characters of variants. And, um, I mean, they are doing low-T variants. Now we just have COVID variants. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I'm not meaning to make light of the situation, but y- no. you got to laugh at some point. You have to. You have to make light of it. Um, uh, I, it, it yeah, I don't want people to think that, that we're, we're joking about this. We both know how serious it is. Right. I, I know I've lost uh, someone uh, yep. that was pretty close to me um, that that uh, I'll never see them again, and I still can't wrap my head around it because... Yep. They had it, and they uh, um, they didn't want to want to go to the hospital. And let me just tell you, people, if, if if you're sick, if you're really sick, if you have a bad immune system and stuff like this, just go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Like like no one's. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to make this get political or anything, um, but just it just I don't care what what your stance is on any of it. Uh, just uh, be safe. Don't Stay mess safe. don't mess around with this. No, don't. The, the don't. virus does not care what your political party is. No, no, not at all, not at all. Like you're not you're not proving that point doing anything either way. So. Uh, yeah. All right. There's our PSA for the week. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, all right. All right. Uh, uh, well, we, we can't really start anything on this episode until we talk about the big news that came out on New Year's Eve. Yeah. The, the passing of the wonderful, lovely Betty White. And so uh, it's like it's been years where it's like it, it, you see a, another death that happens and you're like, oh, no, is this Betty White? And then you start to believe she's going to outla- out- outlive us all. Mm-hmm. And then even when I saw it, I was like, I had to research it myself. I was like, please don't make this actually be true right, right. now. It was, um, I mean, she was weeks away from 100, right? Yeah, January 17th. But yeah, I saw something. Day, that, I, she's a day yeah. after my birthday. Yeah, I saw something that I want to make canon, though. She had. She was make 99. Canon. Yeah, th- this needs to be canon in our sacred timeline. Uh, okay. She had, she was 99, so she had like 20, I think it was 24 leap years. If you add those days, wow. add those days, it'll put her over January 17th. So she she was technically. Technically. If she we take, technically lived, lived over 100 years. If we take out the leapy stuff, she was over 100. And that's my headcanon now, and I'm living by it. All right. No, I, I like it. I'm, I'm fine with it. I wanted her to see 100. So yeah. I, I, I don't care what it is. I'll, I'll, I'll go with it. And the other thing that I love seeing uh, after she passed was uh, she died on New Year's Eve because no one throughout history will have more toast given to her on the day she dies than someone wow, on New- Everybody has champagne. Everybody's yeah. together. I mean, hell, I was on vacation in Houston. I was at Galveston Beach on a deck, and we toasted her. The entire deck, some drunk girl was like, to Betty White. And so, of course, we, <laughs> we all toasted to Betty White. So, like, it was great. The other one was, it was, uh, all she did was s- s- grab 2021 by the throat and say, you're coming with me, bitch. <laughs> I like that. Do yeah. you have a, uh, do you have a, a favorite Betty White moment or like, uh, a character that she played? Yes. Uh, one of my favorite shows of all time is a show called Boston Legal. Uh, it stars Alan, okay. uh, Alan Short, uh, James Spader and William Shatner. And she mm-hmm. plays a character who is an elderly woman who's bored. So she starts killing people and robbing people, and she really? just yeah she just goes to the lawyers to get her out every time. It's one of my it's one of the best written shows. It's David. That's uh, fantastic. Yeah, it's David E. Kelly. Um, 
it's I think it was like the mid two thousands. It might have ended in like early 2010, 2011, somewhere like that. But it was William Shatner and James Spader with one of the greatest bromances ever in the history of TV. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's on Hulu, I believe. It, it's such a great show. And Betty White is in I think the second season, and she recurs like throughout the entire series. That she hits, she kills somebody by hitting him over the head with a frying pan. Like, <laughs> like it was an ultimate Betty White movie. Or a Betty White moment. Yeah. What about you? I, mean, I feel I feel like like all these little small roles that she's had in movies or TV shows, she has such a legacy. She has, she was respected so highly mm -hmm. that people really put everything into creating a character for her and her being as fantastic uh, of just a human being uh, as she was as well as an actress. Um, she has so many cool roles. But what I loved is I – being a Cleveland person myself, I mm -hmm. loved Hot in Cleveland. Yep, uh, it lasted a couple seasons on. Uh, what was like a, T had, it was a, TV Land, maybe TV Land. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Um, and it, I mean, seeing her like in in like brown sweatshirts or or like Indians or and stuff like that. To me, it's really cool because because I'm a Cleveland fan and uh, I just really love that show. So that was my favorite role uh, of hers. Uh, now I was I was I was going to the Cavs Hawks game. Uh, on New Year's Eve, so the day the day it happened, and <clears throat> I was talking to my brother uh, about the fact that like I'm pretty sure when she was younger she was a smoke show. Oh yeah, and and he was like no, and I said look her up. He did, and she legit was a smoke show. She looked like uh, uh, an absolute model. She was gorgeous. Oh, she was she a, really was. She was a smoke show at 95, man. Right, exactly <laughs> at 95 even. So. Uh, she was just, it, I feel like she was everyone's grandma. She was so cool. Mm -hmm. um, she is, I mean, uh, for all these things in this world that we can debate each other on and everything, and people have, have, have an opinion on one way or the other, one thing you can't have an opinion on is, is was she not a good person? Was she not hilarious? Was she not so highly respected? She was, she was all of that. Uh, so she was definitely someone um, that uh, the world is, is very much so going to miss. Did you see the video that she did with Ryan Reynolds of behind the scenes of a? I think they were they were in a movie together, where Ryan Reynolds was trying to talk to her and she was just a complete asshole to him, and he kept trying to tell people like Betty White is mean, and one of the directors took him like Betty White is a fucking national treasure. Do we yeah. care about Ryan Reynolds? No, it's Betty White, yeah. and and as like they hugged Betty White, she's like he was so mean. She's flicking him off behind her back like it, yeah. it's it's it's. Betty White is a treasure, and she will be sorely missed in so many ways. Yes, yes. All right, uh, we need to move on to our next topic today. What do we got? What do we got this week? The delay of Morbius, the next movie in the Sony verse of Spider Man, uh, or not Spider Man? I don't know. Um, but Morbius got delayed. I believe it got pushed back to May. Now the rumor is, and I am a hundred percent for this. That got delayed because they wanted to shoot some new scenes with spoiler alert for No Way Home, Mr. Andrew Garfield. So Andrew Garfield is he in No Way Home? He is. He's well. I, I, he plays some person we don't know his name, but some mm -hmm. spider guy we don't know who he is though. Yeah, we, we've never seen the actual person. So um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, those memes have been great, by the way. Like, who the hell is this guy? And it shows Spider Man. Yeah. Like, I've been enjoying that since No Way Home came out. Well, even like even like like Wikipedia or something like that. Like, they they'll show like the actors uh, of that like everyone's played, and then Spider Man. It'll be. It'll be like no one knows. That unknown. Whatever. Yep. Yeah. So it's been it's been it's been really cool. Yeah. I, I think it would be great for Garfield to become part of the Sony verse. And now that it makes sense, I fully think Sony should do it. Because now you can have Venom, like the Tom Hardy Venom, which I just watched mm -hmm. Venom let there be carnage the other day on the flight. I enjoyed that more than I expected to. It was funny. Uh Tom Hardy is fantastic in that role. There was some moments that just weren't very good. Like when Carnage yells, let there be carnage. It's like, uh, yeah. uh, uh, come on, come on, man. But overall, I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was funny. Um, and if we get Morbius in that universe, which he is, because in the trailer he says, we are Venom. No, I'm just kidding. It's just me, Dr. Morbius. So they're in the same universe, and in the Morbius trailer, there's a poster of Spider-Man in the background yelling murderer, which is confusing because if we're looking at, like, the current MCU, that would tie into Mysterio being murdered. That's why they were calling murderer. But mm -hmm. 
in No Way Home, Garfield says, at some point, I just stopped pulling my punches. So yeah. they can make it work. And as long as they have Feige's guiding hand, and that, that needs to happen. Do not keep Feige away from this because we've seen what Sony does without Feige. But if, if Feige helps them guide this, we could have a really cool Sony Spider-Man universe and have the MCU Spider-Verse. And it would make sense for them both to happen. And I, I am a lot more excited now about Andrew Garfield than I was during the Amazing Spider-Man movies. He was. Yeah, I mean, I love, fantastic. I love Andrew Garfield. So I, I mean, I, I was in before, before all of this. I mean, he was. I feel. I don't know. Nah, I'm not going to say that because that's not true. But he's. It, I mean, I love, I love Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. So I'm all for, for more, uh, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. Um, I don't know if, if, if they're going to. I mean, have they have they brought Feige in with with the Sony Sony verse stuff at all? I th- I don't know. I think he's a producer, but I'm not okay. sure. I can find that out real quick. But yeah, because I I mean, unless they unless they haven't already, I don't see them bringing him on to do that. I mean, I, I mean, we obviously we want Feige to, to to handle every single thing that happens entertainment wise in the world uh, at this point. And keep him um, away from Star Wars. Let Favreau and Filoni keep Star Wars. Yeah. Okay. I I, I agree with that. Um, cause that's the only really good thing we've got in Star Wars for a while, but, uh, you um, know what, well, this is for another day, but the, uh, the last Jedi is one of the best Star Wars movies. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've, we've had it for another day. We've, we've discussed it, uh, on the podcast. We haven't discussed it in video format. Uh, so yeah, that would, that maybe that will be for, for another day, especially because I thought you were talking about a whole nother thing when we were talking about that. So uh, oh yeah, that's probably, right. You confused the probably, movies. <laughs> yeah, it probably it probably deserves a revisit, anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially but, with the I, book of Boba Fett being out now. Yeah, and then I, I just gotta say this: uh, Let There Be Carnage was uh, to me a massive disappointment. Um, I I was I didn't I I, I went into Venom uh, with with an open mind. I actually didn't even see Venom until it was digitally owned for like six months because it just, I don't know why I just didn't. Uh, and and I watched it. and I was like, wow, this was actually pretty good. I really enjoyed it, and I was super excited. Uh, for Carnage, uh, growing up, I, I I loved Carnage. Carnage to me is one of the dopest looking superhero mm-hmm. villain things in, in in the whole entire world. Um, so I was super excited for it, and it just disappointed me. I just wasn't into it at all. I thought, man, it's, it was kind of it was it was a letdown for me. No, I'm I'm sorry about that. I I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I thought I thought Carnage. I thought the graphics were really good too. I thought Andy Serkis did a great job directing it. Um, well, there's some parts I wish were better, of course. It's a Sony movie. But for what it, it was better than my expectations were for what Venom 2 was going to be. So I thought Venom was okay, but like there was parts of the movie, like when he goes into the lab and gets Venomed, I was like, okay, so this is a multi billion dollar lab industry, and nobody saw him walk in. They're like, who'd you bring in with you? There's not one camera that shows yeah. you the person who just interviewed you. Wasn't the last? I mean, come on. That took me so far out of the movie. By the yeah, time I got I, back I, in, the credits were rolling. Yeah, yeah and, and, and by all means, Venom is not a perfect movie whatsoever. No. Um, I just, I think because it was a Sony movie, I wasn't really expecting much at all. And I was pleasantly surprised. And then because of my pleasant surpriseness, uh, if that's a word, um, <laughs> from that, then going into Carnage, I actually had expectations. And those expectations were not met for that one. So. No. It's all well, good. Yeah. It's Sony. It's Sony. We, we give them a pass because yeah. they let MCU use Spider-Man again. Yeah, I, honestly, yes. I mean, it, 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 as long as they they were keep letting uh, the MCU have have uh, Tommy, uh, I mean, I'll give them passes. Yeah. Well, because they they don't have to. I heard a funny. I don't remember where I heard it from, but the joke was: Did they allow? Did they try and make Venom go into the MCU by at the end of? Let there be carnage with the post credit scene. Did they try and do it? And Feige was like, "No," and just send him back. <laughs> like they kind of <laughs> they try to like tie his hands. Like you have to use Venom now. He's like, "No, no, I don't. I'm just going to steal the symbiote." Yeah, which I am very well, interested to see where that goes. Well, and then and then um, if and I'm not going to say spoiler alert. It's been out for weeks. If you haven't seen Spider Man No Way Home yet, first we've of all, already said it you. anyway. Yeah, yeah, but shame on you. See it. Yeah, why are you watching this and you haven't seen yeah, Spider-Man? Yeah. You have serious priority issues in your life. Yeah, but I, I did see that there was was it a deleted scene or something? But but Venom was supposed to be a part of that 
that big battle scene. Yeah, I did hear that the writers originally included him in it, and then they okay. decided. And I'm glad they didn't. That was the issue with the Amazing Spider-Man too. They tried to put way too much in that movie, and mm-hmm. it just like the Green Goblin did not have to be in the Amazing Spider-Man too. He did no, not. No. And then the Rhino at the end with the horrible Paul Giamatti Russian accent. It was so bad. Yeah, I just, I just like the look of Rhino. And, I mean, I mean, and I just like Rhino. I, I don't know. There's a special part of me that just that absolutely loves the Spider-Man universe. So. Yeah. No, I mean, I get that. I just I'm okay I with it. I was okay with seeing it. But, yeah, I, I mean, as much as I love Andrew Garfield, there's a reason why there shouldn't have been a third. It wasn't. Right. Well, I think there's going to be now. I think there's enough well, fan demand now. now. But, yeah. again, they, they need to not try and do it on their own. Well, does that mean Toby's getting something else too now? Possibly. Gosh, I don't want another Toby. Leave Toby back. back. I I hope not. I'm with you. I'm like, I think Toby came in and did his part and wrapped up. Because the only thing really with him was did Mary Jane and Toby make it work? And he said like it was hard, but we made it work. So that story yep. got wrapped up. Andrews, he's still young. He can keep going. Uh, yeah, I did. I mean, there was still a lot of story to be told with Andrew, and 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 we can get into the whole. I mean, Andrew, Andrew himself, uh, uh, for a third one as well. We can get into that uh, on, on a future episode as well. Uh, one of the things I really liked about it, he did an interview and he said, uh, uh, well, let me find the actual quote. He was talking, I think it was to Entertainment Tonight, about how he could save Gwen Stacy. Let me see, I got it right here. Like, can still save her? Yeah, um, here, I got it. My Spider-Man got to save his younger brother's romantic relationship, potentially, and to heal the most traumatic moment of his own life through doing it for his younger brother, making sure that he didn't have the same fate. There's something cosmically beautiful about that. It meant giving, it meant getting a second chance at saving Gwen. How beautiful is that? Like that to me yeah, shows I mean, how very, much. Yeah. It shows how much he loves the character. He loves like which. It, and that's that's yeah. that's I think that's my favorite part is knowing that he does because, uh, like I just mentioned, uh, he 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 kind of sabotaged himself um, for for a third movie when it was originally supposed to possibly happen. Um, so uh, it's nice to know that, that that he actually does care about the character. I mean, he obviously cares about the character. He wouldn't have done this movie, but to even hear a quote like that, it's a whole other layer of him caring. Um, and like I said, I, I'm I'm all for anything Garfield in uh, in the Spidey verse. Agreed. Um, all right, next thing, let's move on real quick. Uh, Book of Boba Fett. I know you haven't watched it. I have. I just want to say a quick little thing about it. It's wonderful. Uh, the first episode, I wasn't sure how much I liked it, but the second episode was just straight up as space western as you can be. I mean, they hijacked a mm-hmm. train for the love of God. He had okay. he had to win the affection of a tribe. It was. Back to the Future vibes, which there was many Back to the Ooh. Future shout outs in it. Um, There's even like a, a part where they put Emmett on the train. So thanks, Eric Voss, for that little tidbit. Uh, <laughs> but it, I, I am really excited to see what they do with Butcher Boba Fett. I don't want to go too far into it because I don't want to spoil anything for you. But it, yeah, it, I, was, I was under the weather yesterday and yeah. I just wasn't able to, to catch up for today. So I will definitely watch it uh, probably today. I mean, what do I got to watch? Not the Browns, right? <laughs> You thought you died a little. Oh my god! Did you see how much the tickets were doing for that game, the Browns and Bengals? I I know I could have sat pretty well for about twenty five bucks a couple days ago. Yeah, I, I looked. There was like twenty rows back for five dollars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, who wants to watch the backed up Browns versus the backed up Bengals? I mean. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a preseason it, I mean, game. No, no Joey B, no Baker. I mean, just please get this season over with. This yep. is this no. this off season is going to be. It's already awful. Yeah, uh, Brown's Twitter is the most toxic Twitter uh, I've seen since since joining Twitter for like the last year. Mm-hmm. The uh, the beautiful thing is you you may be ready to go ahead into the doghouse and pout and cry for about five more months, but first in the NFC, yes, more than likely MVP. Um, uh, I don't think so. Well, I don't think he has a chance personally. You don't think he has a chance? No, he's not in my. He's not even in my top. Well, three. you're just you don't vote. No, I don't vote, but he's the odds on favorite by it? he's the odds on favorite by a large amount to win it through Vegas and Vegas knows what they're talking about and he absolutely deserves it. He's had an amazing season. Does he have the most yards? No, Tom Brady does. Does he have the most touchdowns? No. Who has that? Uh, I think Tom Brady. Yeah, he does. I yeah. just I just wanted to hear it out of your mouth. Yeah, how how many more pass attempts? Uh, I think it was like 
190 more pass attempts, so he should have more passing yards because Rodgers doesn't need it because they are methodical. Since when have we ever talked about passing attempts when talking about an MVP award? I mean, when you look at the average per attempt, Rodgers is higher. When you look at the touchdown to interception ratio, Rodgers is by far higher. When you look at the uh, drop percentage, What's QBR, uh, higher than Brady's. Is it okay? Because I remember, I remember when looking before we did the show, uh, his was uh, I think like right at a hundred QBR. Yeah, I think Rodgers is like a one twelve. I mean, Rodgers to me isn't is possibly not even top three for quarterbacks of the MVP race. Well, that's um, great. He's been doing all this with. Four out of five linemen out. He's been doing it with a broken pinky toe. Um, I don't know what else you want from the guy. They're, they're, they're the best team in the I want in, better in, stats. Why? They what, what do you what's the best stat? They're thirteen and three. That's that's, that's great. That is. Uh, I'm just saying he's not. There's a lot of more. There's a lot bigger pieces on that team that he has. Uh, than than uh, Tom Brady does. I disagree. Gosh, you're making you're making me you're making me defend Tom Brady. I hate Tom Brady. I just dis- the fact that people think he's the goat. The the Packers are built differently differently than the Buccaneers. Brady has like, to throw I like, like crazy. I like Rodgers way more than I like Tom Brady, and, and 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 you're making me do this. I don't know why you're doing it because, because Rodgers had a better it's season. Just facts, it's stats this year. Brady had to throw a lot more. Brady had to throw a lot more because they didn't play the same yeah. game the Packers did. The Packers. He, he doesn't have an Aaron Jones. He doesn't have an AJ Dillon. That's not Aaron Rodgers' fault. No, it's not his fault. I'm saying that goes against him. It does not so go against for, him for, for for MVP. Right? It does not. And here's the thing: is Tom Brady. Tom Brady to me, I don't even know if we were going to go into MVP race right now. This just happened. Mm-hmm. But. For me, it, it I don't even know if Tom Brady's the MVP. No, it should if it's not, if it's not Rodgers, it should be Joe Burrow. No, it shouldn't be Joe. In Burrow. In terms of if quarterback, anything, if anything, it should be uh, uh, Jonathan Taylor. If, if we're going quarterback, the, yeah, well, if we're if we're going quarterback, it, it should be Tom. Sorry, Brady. quarterback's always going to win simply because the value of the quarterback position is significantly higher than any other position. So, in terms of most valuable player, the quarterback who touches the ball every single game, who has to deal with all the scrutiny of every single game, much more much more than any other position in the league. By default, if you're a great quarterback, you are more valuable than your team than the best running back in the league. There's no question about it. No, I mean, I, I would agree with that. But the fact is, when you look at an MVP, a most valuable player, you take you take uh, JTT uh, out of uh, out of Indy. What is what is that team got? Where is that team at? I think they probably lose three more games than they do now. But if you take Aaron Rodgers out, they lose about ten more. I don't know because they have a really good running game. They still have quite possibly, quite probably, the the best wide receiver in the game right now. They still have one of the top defenses in the league right there. I mean, trust me, Green Bay is my is, is, was my pick preseason. It's my pick now to win the Super Bowl. Uh, having Aaron Rodgers on the team is, is, is incredible. Uh, but they also have, uh, not equally maybe, but really close to great possible uh, positions on that team outside of Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, but Aaron Rodgers utilizes them better than anybody I've ever seen in the history of the game. Was it Aaron thirty-five Rogers, touchdowns? Aaron Rodgers to me is 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 on the Mount Rushmore of of the greatest quarterbacks that's ever played. The thirty, game. I think it's like thirty-eight to four is his touchdown interception ratio. It's like sixteen to one. The Nets' highest in the league that's is right. like eight to one, and that's Mahomes. It's not even it, the yards, the attempts. That's Brady. The touchdowns. That's Brady because they had to throw a lot more. If you if you add hundred and ninety-eight attempts to Rodgers. He will beat Brady in yards. He will beat him in completion percentage. He will beat him in touchdowns. He will beat him in interceptions. So, I I, I, I don't disagree with you, but that's 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 hypothetics at this point. That's not hypothetics. That's truth. It is hypothetics because you don't know because it's not. It hasn't happened. Well, the best team in the league, uh, again, but uh, uh, over Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. I'm going with Rodgers all day, and Joe Burrow over Brady. Joe Burrow with a lot less no, help. Joe Burrow can't be over Brady. He absolutely can. You hate Tom Brady so much that it's clouding your your your, your brain on this. I don't even hate Tom Brady. I think he's the one of if not he's the second best quarterback to ever play the game. No, no possible way is that true. Mm-hmm. He's the most he's the most celebrated. He is the most accoladed. That doesn't mean he's the greatest to play the. the I know he's not. Aaron Rodgers is. Yeah, he's not. He's not even. He's not even. Uh, Tom Brady's not even second. Come on, 
I don't even know if Aaron Rodgers is number one, but Aaron Rodgers is on my Mount Rushmore. Okay. Hold I on. put I put people like Aaron Rodgers, uh, Joe Montana, um, Dan Marino. All right, Tom Brady, four hundred and fifty six out of six hundred eighty two, four hundred or four thousand nine hundred and ninety yards, forty touchdowns, twelve interceptions, a hundred point five passer rating. Joe Burrow, three sixty six for five twenty. So better better completion percentage, four thousand six hundred and eleven y- yards. So three hundred less yards on over a hundred and twenty less attempts, uh, thirty four touchdowns to fourteen interceptions. So Burrow has less touchdowns and more interceptions. That's his big downfall. He has a higher passer rating of one hundred eight point three. So Burrow is at, on par, we'll say, with Brady. No, he's not on par. He's he's close. If there was maybe what were the Bengals before if- Burrow got there? I'm not disagreeing with that, but again, the Bengals have an outstanding wide receiver crew. They have Joe Mixon in the backfield. Are you they forgetting play- Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, uh, no, Chris I'm- Godwin, Leonard Brown. for an- Well, until we the, Antonio until Brown. until this season uh, or until <laughs> this week, Leonard Fournette is a running back. They had they had a good defense. Like you're acting like Tampa Bay doesn't have a Super Bowl team around Tom Brady. Yeah, they have a good, they have a really good team around Tom Brady. I don't think they're going to the Super Bowl this year, but they they, they have a really good team. Obviously, they have a really good team around. Them. So you're not I'm using not, it. Not, you're not using not, it against not Brady. You, you are. No. You're, you're discrediting everybody else for the team around him, but not discrediting Brady. No, I'm trying. I'm saying that because you're diminishing what Tom Brady's stats are. That Tom Brady's stats are the very best. They're not the best. They they're the most. That doesn't mean the best. It does mean the best. It doesn't it mean the best. best. It's the most. It, that's, it, how we just, that's how we, we figure out what's the best is by the most. I, no, I believe efficiency is better than most. Matthew Stafford has more yards than almost everybody every year. Are the Lions ever good? What are the Rams doing? Like, efficiency is better than more. And I would do that to the day I die. You can throw 10,000 yards, that's fine. But if your team does not do good, well, if you throws in 10,000 yards, you're probably winning. But you yeah, can lead yeah. the league in receiving or passing. But if you can't run the ball, who cares? If you can't control, if you throw the ball over and over again with interceptions, who the hell cares how many yards you throw? More I'm does saying, not mean better. Right. You want to. You want to know what an MVP is? An MVP is the most valuable person on the team where if you don't have that person on your team, you're not that good. What what did Tampa Bay do without a Tom Brady? What did the Packers do against the Chiefs with Jordan Love? It's a it's it's first of all, it's a rookie. Uh and he's 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 had what is, it, is that his maybe second start or is that what that was that, that was his first. That was his first start. Come on, that's not even a fair well, fair assessment. Well, who right played there. for Brady? Well, he, has he missed no, a I'm game? Saying, I'm saying I'm saying I'm saying Previously, without without Tom Brady going there, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were a middle-aged team. That, and then as soon as Tom Brady gets on that team, what do they do? They win a Super Bowl. What are they doing now? They're they're a, a, probably a, a heads-on favorite to go to the Super Bowl. No, I they're not. I personally don't think that they're going to go. But that's that's what an MVP is, though. What do you think happens if he doesn't have Gronky Boy? He didn't have Gronky Boy for most of the season. And, la- and last year... He should have gone to the Super Bowl. He played. He had three interceptions in the championship game, and you're acting like he's the reason they went. The defense last no, year. I, I know the defense was fantastic. Is, is like, the only that, reason I, they went. It's not the only reason they the went. The Packers would have beat them in every way, but they they could not get past that defense. They intercepted him three times. Mm-hmm. They had a stupid call on, on fourth down within the 10-yard line. Brady had like a, a 70 passer rating, and you're saying that he's the reason? His value is why they went to the Super Bowl? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> You're going to take out one game. Everyone has a bad game. It's the NFC Championship. It's not one game. It's that. a big I, game. Hey, hey, what wins championships? Defense. Defense. And you know who has defense. a defense this year finally? Packers. You guys, you guys always have a defense. No, we don't. They've had the worst defense. Every single time the Packers lose in the playoffs – Okay, let's, let's do this. Seattle Seahawks, up by 11 with two minutes left. They lose. Rodgers doesn't touch the ball. Arizona Cardinals, Rodgers throws for like 500 yards and five touchdowns and no interceptions. But we lose. Why? Because the defense gives up 48 points. Don't give me shit about defense. The Packers have never had a good defense. If they had, oh, what, if what they had those, a top what 10. Those days with, what about those days with AJ and, uh, and Clay? That those was like 2005. I, I, you said you never had good defense. In terms of the Rodgers era, they have not had a great defense. The only time they did, they had a, a great top five elite defense. They won the Super Bowl. 
If Rodgers had a top 10 defense every year. I love year, you heated on this. If he had a top 10 defense every year he was in the playoffs, I guarantee Rodgers has three Super Bowl reigns minimum. I agree. I agree. I love Rodgers. You know why? Because his value is so high. All right, we got to move on before I scream my head off at you. I know. I uh, love it so much. My, my team sucks. So yeah. I, have no, I have nothing to, to talk about. And so it's fun just to do this. You're you're a dead. All right, let's let's take a quick break. When we come back, we're All talking right. Moon Knight, and the boys is coming back. I love that show so the much. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. This is the Sporty Nerds Universe. Welcome back into the Sporty Nerds Universe. We talked uh, a little bit Morbius. Talked Spider Man. Uh, we just got in a heated argument about the MVP race. Uh, what do we got uh, going on in this second uh, the second part of uh, of this week's show? Well, as we move into 2022, it's time for the next, not phase of Marvel, obviously, but phase four continues this year. Mm-hmm. And so with the movies you have coming up, the what I believe is going to be bigger than Endgame, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. And yes, you heard me right. Um, you've got... I, I thought so. And then until I watched No Way Home, and I'm like, I don't know it, 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 if it's... If it's even on par, which I think it will be, how incredible is that? Well, I think Multiverse of Madness. We're going to see all the Fox X Men characters. We're going to okay. see. We're going to see everything in this movie. And okay, I, X-Men? I, yes, X Men. I think this will be. I, I think the theatrical experience with the reactions and screaming and yelling, as long as the Omega Delta Supercron doesn't become a thing, yeah. um, is going to be better than Endgame. I we we need to both put in a night off for that night when that comes out. Uh, and the plan initially, um, and this is still up in the air, but we will be doing a initial review, hopefully Thursday night after the movie. That's that would, I would love to do that. And then later that weekend, we actually have a special guest from the Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast. Mr. Matthew Carroll is going to join us to talk about Doctor Strange. Multiverse I'm excited. Yeah, the, the stranded panda himself. Uh, Matthew Carroll, he does a great job editing those podcasts. They, uh, it's a lot of fun if you go check out Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast. Yeah. Um, he's going to be joining us to talk about uh, Doctor Strange Mom. So I, I am really excited for Doctor Strange. Uh, we also have Thor, Love and Thunder. We have Black Panther. And then TV series-wise, we have She-Hulk, Moon Knight, Miss Marvel, and Secret Invasion. And I feel like I'm forgetting a movie in there, but I can't think of it right now. Um, but anyway, the rumor is... Moon Knight will be dropping sometime in February. Uh, Now, this is a big departure from the last few years of, or from last year's Disney Plus, because we had WandaVision, we had Mm -hmm. Falcon and Winter Soldier, we had Loki, we had Hawkeye. We had characters who we know we've seen through all the through through the years. This is not that case. This is Moon Knight. I know very little about Moon Knight other than he's a werewolf, and Oscar Isaac is playing him. I believe there's rumors that Blade is going to make a cameo in the series, which makes sense, and it could build into this dark universe in the in the MCU with like vampires and Blade and werewolves. And I'm I'm all for that 100%. I don't know anything about it in terms of the comments. I, I said it before. I don't. I didn't grow up reading the comments. I, I kind of enjoy the surprise of what's coming in MCU. Um, yeah. Respect to him. Nothing against him. It's just not my medium. I, 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 it's like animation. I liked What If, but I'm, animation is not the same as live action to me in terms of my enjoyment level. But Moon Knight with Oscar Sometimes Isaac. Sometimes it is, but it, it, but What If wasn't. No. It, it can be. Like, deep, like Dragon can, Ball like, Z. Like, in, like, I mean, like the, the multiverse. Uh, the Spider-Man oh, oh multiverse Into the Spider-Verse one. is one of the greatest movies I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, it's fan- I mean, yeah. it's, it's, to me, it's, it's, it's probably, uh, it's, I, I don't know if I, I, uh, I wouldn't say it's number one, but it's top three greatest Spider-Man movies we've ever had. Yeah, I'd say it's No Way Home and then Spider-Verse for me. Yeah, and then DC does, I mean, for all the crap we give DC, DC has done a fantastic job with their animated movies, and they have for mm-hmm. for years, for the last 20 years yeah. at least. D- so. DC definitely owns the animated side. Absolutely. Now, Marvel Absolutely. dwarves almost everything now when it comes to live action. Yeah. But but but, um, but I, I agree. Live action is always preferred. Yeah. Like, like if there's a, a Doctor Strange movie coming out, one's live action, one's animated. It's no choice to me. Uh, speaking no. of DC, though, I did love a little thing in New Way Home when Flash was holding the Flashpoint book. As kind of yes. a ha-ha, we did the multiverse before you did. But yeah. uh, I'm, I'm excited for uh, the Flash this year, too, for DC. Absolutely. Uh, that's coming out. I'm, I'm excited to see that. See Keaton back as Batman. Um mm-hmm. 
you know, we give DC shit, and it's it's very deservedly show. So they've they've screwed up a lot, and they don't yeah, seem to know what the hell they're doing, and no. it keeps changing, and they keep mm-hmm. rebooting, yeah, and then rebooting again, mm-hmm. and then rebooting again, and mm-hmm. then bringing back the old one with the new cut. It's just, DC's a mess. Uh, it, it's, it's just it's just it's it's unorganized, just like. I don't know. Star I Wars. Mean, just like, just like I was gonna say, just like, just like yeah. Star Wars. And, and so. I really, really wanted to like Wonder Woman, and I liked the first one. First one's great. Wonder Woman eighty four is the worst movie I've seen in my life. One of the worst movies ever. I I was laying with my fiance, and after it was over, I turned to her. I'm like, "Did you like that?" She was like, "Eh." I'm like, "Good. I don't feel bad going." Exactly. Boo! I booed I, the movie I the from thing. my bed. I'm like, that was so bad. There was. I did the same thing. Like, like, she, like it, I didn't have to bring it up. Emily brought it up. She's like, this is bad. Yeah, it like, was such a bad movie. Is. And and they it's brought her really back, and, and they're like, we're s- please do announce that Patty Jenkins is directing the third one. I'm like, damn it. Yeah. Right. Um, it, it was just, you know. But it, you know what? It got it got it got thrown in the mud so bad that they can't help but realize, okay, what we did didn't work. Right. Stop, and they just retold the what is it, the monkey's paw? They just retold that story, and and a one and they even referenced the story like who mm. they took inspiration. No, you just redid the monkey's paw, and, and you raped someone who had Chris Pine inside them. To, yeah, kinda. I mean that, that was straight up rape. That was straight yeah, up rape. Um, that kind of was. They didn't need to bring him back. That that was stupid. No, they really but, didn't. I mean, I love I love him um, as an actor, but they there was no. It, it's it was simply people enjoyed him from the first one and i feel like they're like we don't really got much else we don't really know what we're doing so let's try to tie him back in so we can at least bring other people back in of like ooh, how is he even in this right yeah and I, that's what they did that's that's where they got me i was because i was very intrigued how is mm-hmm. he in this yeah and and I, after for about the first 15 minutes my might be all right and then it just kept yeah. going downhill and poor pablo pascar like he, he does the mandalorian all the praise for it and then he does that mm-hmm. movie and it just it was anyway we, we need to get off that so we'll just go on how bad wonder woman was um yeah, yeah, yeah. but anyway moon knight coming out it's just like ghostbusters 2016 yeah that was well i never saw it but from what i heard i don't really need to god bless you i, I wish i hadn't yeah. <laughs> but um but yeah so you got moon knight coming out um, which Disney Plus show this year are you most excited about? Like, yeah, She Hulk, Moon Knight, uh, Miss Marvel, and Secret Invasion. Uh, what, what what are you excited about? Just all of well, those. I, st- I still want to know if Ironheart's coming out uh, in twenty twenty two. I, well, I haven't heard it coming out this year. I think that's twenty twenty three. Because because I'm I'm so excited about Ironheart. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure that's Ms- twenty three. Okay, I'm I'm excited about Miss Marvel. I'm excited about what they're going to do with that character. Uh, I'm, and and for me, I'm excited. Is there going to be Squirrel Girl? Because I love Squirrel Girl, and I would love for them to bring bring Squirrel Girl into into uh, the universe as well. Uh, but uh, uh, Secret Invasion uh, is probably what I'm most excited for. Um, it, also, uh, Spider Man Year One. I'm oh yes, for, yep. I'm excited about uh, about Spider Man Year One. We're not getting Tommy uh, for the voice. That's okay. Um, no, yeah, it's, it's a little little. It's just a little downer. It's okay. I'm I'm I, I still am very excited because they they fast forward that point of how they're going to tell his story early on because we've heard that story so many times. So I'm 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 very interested to see how they're going to actually start it. What we get in that year one? Um, are we are we getting? I mean, we're, we get we get Aunt May back again. Hopefully, uh, it's Marissa Tomei, right? That's that's yeah. the actress's name. Mm-hmm. Maybe 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 she comes back to voice voice Aunt May, which which I would love. So uh, it's, 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 it's probably between uh, those three. Those three are probably my favorites that, that I'm most uh, excited about. Oh, and we're also getting, uh, um, it was Agatha all along. No, I, don't, I don't think that's this year, though. Oh, really? I think the Ford confirmed this year are Miss Marvel, uh, Secret Invasion, I just said it, Moon Knight, and She-Hawk. Mm-hmm. She-Hawk I, I is, is reportedly to have uh, Daredevil. And I guess She-Hulk doesn't really qualify because you have Bruce Banner, uh, like Mark Ruffalo's in that show. Yeah. Uh, Secret Invasion, you'll have Nick Fury. I believe Agent Hill is in that as well, or Maria Hill is in that. I really, I really wanted Gina Carano to be She-Hulk so bad. Yeah, but she, Disney isn't going to play with her anymore. I know. You can't be that conservative on social media anymore in today's world. 
I know. It's it just sucks. the way it works. It sucks that that's how it is, but it, it's, it, it sucks. It's... That's how it is. But there's. I just thought she would have been so perfect as She Hulk. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh well, we gotta move on. Just keep watching the first two seasons of uh, Mandalorian, and you'll be able to enjoy it. I know. Yep. Um, but yeah. So I, back to the question: Miss Marvel is, is mm-hmm. what is what you're excited about? Um, uh, Miss Marvel, Year One, Spider Man, and uh, uh, Secret Invasion. Okay. Uh, I'm honestly, if it goes the way I think it will, I think Moon Knight is what I'm becoming more excited. Oh about. really? Yeah. And again, okay. I, I I enjoy the fact that I don't know anything about it. Like every other show, I have an idea of what's mm-hmm. gonna happen, or at least. It could be one of these five things or the theories and all that. I know nothing about Moon Knight, and I'm actually going to avoid any of like the, like the the everything we know about Moon Knight and like those kinds of videos. I want to be surprised. I was like Eternals, and I know we disagree on Eternals, and it was still one of my least favorite movies of the year for Marvel, but I still loved not you say knowing Turtles. Oh, oh, Internals. I thought you were saying Turtles. Like we're bringing Ninja Turtles into this. But, I mean, I, I'd be all for bringing the Turtles into this. I've, oh, I love the Ninja Turtles. Well, the Turtles need a good reboot. Well, we'll, we'll see, we'll like, see like what a, uh, um, what Stoner Boy has in store for them. Wait, what? Um, oh, isn't Rogan doing something? Or yeah, Franco yeah, it's or like something? Rogan. Yeah. yeah he, won't right. work. he won't work with him anymore. That's but, right, that's right. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Seth is, is uh, uh, taking over the realms of it. We're, we'll see what he does. We'll, I mean, I have hope. I don't. I, I'm not a Seth Rogen fan. I, I, I've I'm never. not a Seth Rogen fan at all. But he's he's um, done some funny movies. Like Knocked Up was funny. Um, but he's 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 one of those nerdy guys. He's he's around our age, so he he got to be there for like the animated series. He's gone through everything. Yeah. He's he's at the right age that uh, that that has to have a pulse on what the fans want for for a, a Turtles movie. So I'm. I love the Ninja Turtles so much that I have blind faith, I think. Um, but I'm hoping. I'm yeah. just hoping. I'm Please hoping. It, it, it'd be fun to take my nephews to it. They, they yeah, would enjoy absolutely. it. absolutely. I love the. I mean, oh, I love the Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Uh, nothing will ever top, like, the original Turtles movies, though. Like, no, they're so good. They're I mean, so the, great. The, the, the animated series was so good. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I personally, I love the... The, the early comics of, of Ninja Turtles. Uh, I have a big Ninja Turtles uh, comic collection hmm. uh, from, from IDW Comics, so uh, I love that that as well. Yes. Okay, so back to it. Um, I, I enjoy not knowing anything about the character, so I'm, I'm looking forward to Moon Knight Plus. I liked Oscar Isaac. I thought he did a good job as Poe, even though the writing for that movie was horrible. I liked his character. Um, I haven't seen Dune, but I heard he was really good in Dune as well. Um, I've heard Dune was awful. So I haven't watched I, it. I've heard both. I've heard it was great okay. and I've heard it was awful. I, I have need, a feeling I, it's one I, of the movies. I, need to see it. I have a feeling it's one of the movies that I'm gonna like because I enjoy mm-hmm. exposition and storytelling and slow burns because I there's usually a bit payoff. There are some people who if it's a slow burn or like a very expositional heavy kind of story, they just don't like it. And that's fine, that's their choice. I if, I yeah. like those kinds of movies. That's yes, why I people, like Eternals. Some people need something they need action from the get go right. throughout the whole thing. Yeah, and and that's what Marvel was doing. It's not, it's not everything for everyone. It's something no. for everyone now. Like yeah. Eternals yeah. was the Eternals was not everybody's favorite movie, and I get that. And as soon as I left, I'm like I liked it, but I even told you I think I'm like I liked it. I don't think you're going to. And yeah, I, yeah, and, and, I, was, and, and yeah. I and I didn't I didn't love it. Yeah, but you know, that's I, I do want to rewatch it. I want to give it another viewing. Yeah, um, comes out so in a few days on Disney yeah, it Plus. Does. It, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I will definitely rewatch it um, just to just to see if I like it a little bit more because there is sometimes movies where uh, and, and 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 MCU movies even where I I enjoy them and I can respect them more for what they were the second viewing. I think my problem is I go I I adore the movie theater experience. Mm-hmm. I adore it so much. Um, it's 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 it's. I mean, for my birthday, I hate I despise my birthday. My birthday's coming up in what seven days now a week um and uh, what i love to do is I, two things i love to do in this world open sports cards and go to the movies and that's what i do on my birthday now to make make it the happiest day for me so i think i put too much uh, too much into going to see it in the theater sometimes um and it'll 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 backfire sometimes i think this movie may have backfired a little bit so i am excited to see it for a second time yeah and that movie is not the one like spider-man where people were cheering cheering and it's like yeah. this isn't that kind of movie oh but, emily saw it a second time sorry to cut you off emily saw it a second the spider-man second time without me mm-hmm. uh she was visiting her family how dare she, she? she 
Well, I knew she was going to do it, and I said, go ahead and do it. Oh, no. uh, but she was she was really disappointed. No one cheered at all. A, like how, all. how long after it was out did she see it? Um, Maybe a week and a half. Okay. At that point, I think everyone who is going to be the people who cheer and get excited – have yeah. already seen it multiple times. Yeah, but um, she said she said the movie wasn't as good because of that whole experience yeah. wasn't there. Yep, that, that's part of the experience for me. That's why yeah. Endgame and Infinity Wars are such a high pedestal Game. for me. Because in terms of theater experience, like I was actually watching videos this morning. I, I've never really watched these. I watched the Endgame reactions over and over, but yeah. I hadn't really watched the Infinity War reactions. And when when Spidey starts, like Mr. Stark, just the theaters a. <gasps> Like that is quintessential to the Marvel to the Marvel experience now. Yep. And yep. I mean, all these times I'm I'm, I'm getting I'm getting chills on the mm-hmm. back of my neck. Like we because I keep thinking about stuff from like Steve Rogers and 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 and, and uh, it's just it was it's it's so that's why it's like it really pisses me off when people come out and say that these movies uh, aren't aren't cinema because I get so amazing feels watching these movies sometimes yep. and. The payoff sometimes on these movies is just, it just it just warms my heart. Yep, agreed. Um, so, all right, uh, moving on. So we talked Moon Knight and all that stuff in 2022 for Marvel. Mm-hmm. Yep. There's another show that is coming out this year that I am probably more excited about than all the Marvel shows. It is on Amazon. It is The Boys. Mm-hmm. I talked to you about the boys. I think at the beginning of the podcast, you had not watched it. So before we move on to what is coming out, what are your thoughts on the boys? Now that you have watched season one and season two, I love the boys. Um, I love the characters in the boys. Uh, the only character I don't, I've never really loved is, is, is the main, um, normal human character. Huey? Who lost his, yeah. I don't like him. I think that's the I'm point. Just, he's supposed to be a, a a weird guy. Yeah, he's a weird dweeb. I just I, I just don't care for him. Uh, and I and, and I pretty much made that decision within the first 10, 15 minutes of the very first episode. You're a very judgmental human being. I am. Uh, but I give. But through through two seasons now, I was I was hoping to like him more and more, and I don't. And then that the like his his love interest. She's a uh, starlight. Yeah, I, I love me some starlight. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie about that. She's, uh, she's no I, Florence Pugh. She's no Florence Pugh, but, but she's she is a if we we're doing a tier star. system, she's 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 a tier below uh old Flo Pew. Um, Flo Pew. Like Flo Pew. Uh, Flo but Pugh uh, t- tubes. No, we can't do that. Oh my god. Don't, <laughs> we where, can't. where did you just take that? Gosh, you, I was you being said pretty Flo innocent. Pugh and it was too close to Fallopian. We can't Flo Pew Flo cannot Pugh, be a th- Pugh, Pugh, Pugh. Um but yeah, I love I love the characters, I love the storylines. Um I love uh, I love that uh, uh, one of the actresses from One Tree Hill is in the uh, is in this. Um, I didn't watch that. One. That's the bad. Th- that's the bad thing is I don't know the people's names, uh, but uh, the guy that says uh, uh, the c word all the time. Oh, Carl Urban. Yeah, it, it was his love interest. Uh, she was from she was from One Tree oh, Hill. Okay, I okay, loved okay. her in One Tree Hill. Um, the I'm c word. I don't know if we want to say that word. I don't want to say it. I hate that word. I think it's a disgusting, dirty word. <laughs> it's dirty. That's why I love it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just I'm. A, I that's that that's that's like the word that you you actually consider not saying because it's really dirty. Yeah, that, that cuts uh, you deep. Yeah, like we can say the f bomb and stuff like yeah, that. Who gives a shit? Yeah, yeah, like fuck it. Yeah, but, it doesn't uh, hurt anybody. No, no, but the c word uh, that's that's yeah. that's the word you say when you really want to piss someone off. Cut them to the core. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but yeah, and, and I love that. I love that actor too, though. Uh, he's from uh, from the Star Trek movies, right? Carl Urban. Yeah. Yeah. So he was also uh, oh, in, yeah. he was also in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, and then, then we got we got uh, we got Fish Guy. Uh, he the was deep. in uh, Yeah, he was in uh, 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 Gilmore or not Gilmore Girls, uh, uh, Gossip Girl. So yeah, I never watched that show. Yeah, I just brought up One Tree Hill and Gossip Girl. On the show, yeah, you didn't, didn't think that was going to happen. Nope, nope, nope. I, I did not know I was going to be in a podcast discussing Gossip Girl and One Tree Hill. I watched a few episodes. <laughs> Don't of you One threaten Tree me Hill. with a good time? I will. I will. We will turn this podcast into like a a, a sixteen year old girl's uh, favorite TV shows podcast. We'll talk OC, One Tree Hill, Nine Hundred Two One Zero, Gossip Girl. 
Dawson's Creek. I'll go. I'll, I'll go everywhere. No, we won't. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce or announce my re- resignation from the Sporting Arts <laughs> Universe. That is where we are going. We're going solo. All right. Um, but, uh, so, Boys Season 3 is coming out mm-hmm. in June. They did finally announce it. If you have not, and I don't know if you've done this, if you have not gone on the Vaught International YouTube page, you should do it. Oh, no. Yeah, because they've been, do- they've been putting out, like, every month they've been putting out what is called the 7-on-7 seven seven with Cameron Coleman, which mm-hmm. is essentially Tucker Carlson in the Boys Universe. Um, and it's great. They ha- like All the actors pop on and do, like, Music videos and commercials, and they oh, do. They, cool. they have that Vop Plus Day, and it's just like it, it was. The, it, they said it was to bridge the gap between season two and three, uh, and then in the last okay. episode of the of Seven on Seven is when they announced the um, the superhero draft, which is when they announce the actual date. So there's a superhero draft which is going to start off season three, um, but it is very much a Fox News satire. Mm-hmm. It, it is. It's like, we're here on 7 on 7. We tell you all that's true. That's red, white, and blue. <laughs> it, 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 even the so back, it's right? like the five? Is that, is no, that no, no. It's, it's Tucker Carlson. Okay. It is straight up Tucker Carlson. It, okay. it, he even kind of looks like him and does the weird little. That, that, <laughs> that's my Tucker Carlson face. Um, I hate that guy so much. Anyway. Um, Better than CNN. <sighs> Tucker Carlson is... It is just straight up Nazi propaganda. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> let's move on. Uh, the mm-hmm. Boys season three coming out. A bit, bit commentary on social issues, and Jeff and I disagree on what some of them are. We talked a little bit before podcast. I don't mm-hmm. really want to get into it because it gets too political. But it and I'm is, not even a political guy. I'm not. I can be. I get more you into it be. when the election yeah. comes around. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I hated the Orange Man, but there you is, hated the Orange. You, I, I hated the mean him tweeter. with a passion. The, the, Gosh darn his mean tweets. Yep, him and the Twitter in chief. Yep. Who, who sat around and watched our capital get, get attacked while he just sat there and wished it was more professional looking. Anyway, um, let's move on. The Boy Season 3 comes out in June. I have no idea what to expect for the show. Uh, it seems yeah, I like don't either. I expect gore. I expect yes. over the top gore. Uh, mm-hmm. I expect to laugh a tremendous amount. Um, I think it is one of the funniest shows i've seen in a very long time and, and, and if you yeah. haven't watched it again go back and watch it because you picked up so much the second time around uh, they, let, they left it on a huge cliffhanger and then the yeah. rona happened so we uh we, we have a long pause between it but i'm still and i don't really the love the cliffhanger i do i'm interested to see where they go with it yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested. I mean, I'm I'm not saying I'm 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 like, oh yeah, I don't want to watch it now. I absolutely do. Uh, it's just I I really was hoping that wasn't going to be the case uh, on the cliffhanger. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll so, see where, where where they take it yeah, and where it goes. It's better than the Hawkeye cliffhanger. That was shitty. We're gonna bring one of the most important villains from the entire universe in. We're gonna make him super powered somehow now because he was just getting shot and hit by a car and got right up. And then we're gonna shoot him in the face, but you're not gonna see it. Well, we don't know, but we don't know. We don't know. Where exactly. Shot. It was either they killed Kingpin, which I, is stupid, or they, there's no there's no way they killed Kingpin. Right. With all or the they did that stuff. and did the stupid fake out, which is I, I hate even more than them killing him. It, it, yeah. I I really was disappointed. But in here's the, hot the thing: dive. is was this a cliffhanger? They made. Is there going to be a season two? I I don't think there will be. They he he. There's an Echo series coming out. Okay. And uh, Daredevil was rumored to be in She-Hulk. So, uh, he, if they didn't kill him, then, which I, we know they didn't kill him. There's uh, no way. If they did, it's yeah, he'll literally be back. the top five stupidest things right. uh, they've ever done yeah. since the start of Iron Man. Yeah. Uh, that, that, he does go blind in the Tomet, so I'm guessing they're just going to make him blind now, too. Which, again, I don't really like. But the Hawkeye... Yeah, if, if that's the case, I don't like that either. The entire season finale of Hawkeye just felt like a complete mess. Like, we're going to have the entire yeah. Rockefeller Center attacked. We're going to knock the tree down. And we're not going to have any cops show up. <laughs> like, we're going to let Yelena and Hawkeye hit their little heart-to-heart for like 10 minutes on the yeah. ice while we've destroyed the yeah. one of the most important buildings in the world. Mm. What the... I, just, I, I hated it. Was. It. I hate, it was a mess. Yeah, all they had to do was say, like have Kingpin say, make sure the police are busy. And that would have fixed a lot of it, but they didn't do that. And well, and it w- was was I the only one that kept waiting for Spider-Man to make a cameo at the end? 
I think everybody was hoping, but I think a lot of us were not expecting it. I was hoping for it. I mean, I, I yeah, I guess I wasn't. I mean, well, I don't know, like because at the end of Spider Man, you hear you hear the 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 cop call and stuff like that about what's going on there. So I really thought at the end of Spider Man, and then where that one was, that it was at the same time, and that we were gonna get Spider Man in the that nice blue suit. Yeah, nope, they, 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 they just tricked us. And then may, maybe they were going to put them in the worst credit scene of the history of Marvel. But Yeah, yeah, but yeah it, was, just, it, was, it was unorganized. It yeah, was unorganized. I, 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 was so, I loved the show. I thought it was a great show up through the first well, five it was episodes. One of my, it was really one of yeah. my favorite shows uh, of last year. Yeah, and then sure. the, the season finale knocked it down like four spots, I think, in our, in our final rankings for me. Mm, yeah. And I even I, said that I, it didn't sit the landing. No, it didn't. It didn't at all. It, it, but the thing is, it, what's weird is I wish that was a movie, and then I wish Eternals was a show. Because I, I really think I really think you could have you could have done more with Eternals. I think you could have uh, explained more with Eternals. I think you could have had more build up with Eternals. I think you could have really had a nice uh, eight episode series of Eternals. I mean, again, you're not going to get those people to do a Disney Plus show. Let's get real. But I just think. Uh, for to get for for people to get the most out of something, I think you would have got more out of Eternals if it was a was a show. I'd agree. Uh, and uh, I did, I just thought of this for some reason. There is a movie trailer I saw that if you haven't seen it, Jeff, you need to watch. Everything, everywhere, all at once. It's got Michelle Yo uh, Yao Yeo Yeah Michelle Yao. Yeo. I think it's pretty sure it's Michelle Michelle Yao. Um, mm-hmm. She was in Shang Chi. It looks like the most interesting. And unique take on the multiverse I've seen in my life. Um, okay. Ch- okay. Check out that trailer. It, it comes out. I think it comes out uh, in March. It looks amazing. So multiversal okay. stuff. Check that out. Boys season three is coming out in June. A uh, whole bunch of Marvel stuff coming up this year. I, I'm really excited. I can't wait to keep doing this podcast with you. Yeah. Um, uh, and I and, I just love that 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 we've advanced now to like video podcast right. uh, format. Uh, you can still hear it uh here just a regular podcast but i think i think uh it's it's more i don't know it's more special to me when we get to banter back right. and forth and really see each other's reactions uh and whatnot agreed and uh also we, you, we can put some of these clips on tiktok which you can follow us at, at sporting nerds instagram tiki talk um tit twitter and instagram are at sporting nerds pod so again Did tit you tit twitter tit twitter tit twitter titty twitter mm-hmm. Titty, 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 titty Twitter. It's like a titty twister. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yep. But uh, that's going to do it for today's show. Uh, do you got anything else you want to leave us on? Mm. I feel like I did, and I don't now. Um, Good. I... <laughs> <laughs> we fair. don't care what you have to think or say. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, this was the nerd part of the podcast this week we will put out another shorter podcast recapping the nfl week 18 and previewing the nfl playoffs and uh well we already made our predictions for the mvp in this episode but and yeah. that that's something we, that we weren't supposed to but we did you know, uh, he, he says some blasphemous things and i had to check his ass but um but no we're, we're going to be doing some more separate podcasts coming up um doing more like nerdy only and sports only uh, and like mm-hmm. we mentioned before we're looking to bring some people in to you know, join the join the the snoo. It's it's the snoo, by the way. We are the snoo. I don't like it. I say sporty nerds. You, SNU. SNU. Yeah. The sporty nerds. You sounds like a university. I don't know. Snoo just sounds so. It sounds so. Uh, um. Uh. uh what's that? Kevin Smithy. Yeah. 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 How about snuff? Just, well, now it just now it, it sounds like we're, it's it's part of a snuff film or something. <laughs> sounds like we're sneezing. Snuff. Uh, okay, so, we're just going to do the Sporting Nerds universe. We're just going to say it all. Because SNU doesn't really work. Sporting so, Nerds, you? Sounds like a university and there should be a fight song behind it's it. It's because it's like, well, yeah, because it's like, it's like uh, you know, like a uh, college program. Oh, we got, yeah, and then for the sports, we're going to talk about college football playoffs uh, and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, that was fun. Coming up. Yeah, that's was, <laughs> was real fun, right? You know what I love is the, is the Rose Bowl had higher ratings than both the playoff games. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I love that Cincinnati made it. They actually yeah. held great story. Exactly what I thought they would. I thought they would keep it somewhat close, mm-hmm. but they were going to be outmatched, and that's exactly yeah, and what and happened. And Georgia yeah. just beat the shit out of Michigan, which was just 
really well, we can't it, say anything because it's happened to us too. No, I can say it. It was fun to watch that. Well, it was fun to watch it, I guess. But I'm just, I'm just saying it's like we can't say, like, oh, we're so much better. It's like because it's happened to us. Yeah, we've but, gotten our ass kicked too. We've gotten there a lot more though. Absolutely, absolutely. So, anyway, that's gonna do it for this episode of Sporty Nerds Universe. Uh, I am Adam Dell, and that's Jeff Wolf. Uh, Butt City Jeff on Twitter. I am at Adam Dell S O A on Twitter. Uh, looking forward to seeing you this week. Follow us on everywhere that you can follow us, and we will see you next time.